how's it going? Today we're going to look at this. It's another blue item. Uh, in the last video you would have seen we looked at the Pyre Fat Man and this is going to sit with it. Oh, it's a different shade of blue. I, I put them together. I thought they were the same colour, but they're not. Uh, so these are going to sit in the same rack and they're going to be plugged into Cubase. Uh, before we do that, we may as well have a look at this. These are both DIY items, by the way. The one below is called the... I was going to call it Pyre then. Below is the one called the Powertran Digital Delay Line. Powertran you will recognise from the Transcendent, the Transcendent Polysynth, which we have sitting about here. This is another item that was a kit that you could purchase in the early 1980s. And it's also covered in the magazine articles in Electronic and Music Maker uh, in in February and March 1982. So before we have a look at the delay, let's have a skim through those uh, articles. So the first magazine that it is in is February 1982 of Electronic and Music Maker. And uh, we need to find the page. In fact, it's right here. Look, look, there it is. It's got a, it's got a Music Maker. It's actually got a sticker saying Music Maker over the Powertran brand. Interesting. So digital delay effects unit, page 60. So let's flick over to page 60. So as you can see, this is covered. It's a digital encoding for studio quality results. Time delays from 0.65 milliseconds to 1.6 milliseconds. Pop produces produces all oh, popular timed effects, including phasing, flanging, ADT, and chorus. Echo, including freeze for infinite repeats. Time domain vibrato. Ooh, there's a lot of funky stuff. You can find this on the internet. I've shared some links below if you want to read into it, but it starts talking about all of the different types of delay effects, including phasing, flanging, and stuff like that. And then there's a block diagram of how it's working. You've got the audio coming in. It goes into a couple of anti-aliasing filters, which then goes into a sample and hold, which is then into an analog to digital converter, which then gets saved into the random access memory, which then comes out at whatever delay you'd like. This is um, the way you would choose at the speed at which it would read and delay. Uh, it's got the modulation oscillator, it's got a VCO. So everything from the time scale of everything is up here. And then the audio is dealt here and it's all saved in a 16K byte of static RAM. And it pops out and it gets mixed together into the output to be mixed with the dry signal. So you get the dry signal as well as the delayed signal. Gobbledygook, I know. And it runs through the different parts. Oh, it's quite short. Oh, it's really short. And then we jump over to, oh, the Spectrum Synthesizer. Still on the hunt for one of these to cover for the museum. So uh, if anybody knows of the whereabouts of one, please do let me know. Anyway, let's pop over to the next episode. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, we have Klaus Schulz on the front cover. So we're going to pop over. We're going to find more about it. More advertisement of the Powertran Transcendent. Um, it doesn't mention the price of the kit in this one, it's only the keyboards. Just having a look for a digital delay line, page 66. Okay, so page 66. Right, here we go, the digital delay line. Okay, we're getting into the meat of it now. So this is the digital delay effects unit. It's got everything, it's got the circuit description. Here we have the power supply, which fingers crossed is all right. And this, the last time I turned this delay on, it was working and that was only a couple of weeks ago. Parts cost guide is 182 pounds with full memory. And that is in 1982. So it's quite expensive actually, quite a lot of money. This is the full schematic. If you want to have a look at this closer than you can, it's available, uh, the links are below. But it is very much the same as the flow diagram. You've got the audio coming into here and going through the uh, anti-aliasing filters. And there it goes into a sample and hold and then that gets saved into the RAM, which I think is there. And then you've got the timing and all the VCO voltage controlled oscillator and stuff controlling the clock of the memory. That's over here. Uh, you've got some switches over here for uh, preset speeds of the oscillator. Modulation oscillator is there, I think. And then that all goes down, it all gets mixed together, comes out here. Um, that's the output pre that's the output amplifiers for the delay line, and then it gets mixed over here, the mixer, and then it just basically goes to the output. Uh, I'd say basically it's quite it's quite convoluted, but this is a 1982 digital delay. Kits start at 130 pounds plus VAT. Okay, interesting. So this is the circuit memory selection. Still need to figure it out. I have a feeling there are some missing in this one. So we'll have a look at that. And um, yeah, this is how it selects all the different RAM chips. All interesting, but have a look in your own time. The link is below. 
There's a copy of the single-sided, it looks single-sided circuit board here. It's probably double-sided, oh no, it's double-sided. This is a double-sided circuit board, so that's the component layout for the main PCB. It's quite busy. Uh, it's much like all of the uh, powertrain items. It's just, look at the amount of memory on there. That's all memory for this. That's mad, that is mad, that's amazing. It's got a little run through of how a DAC and an ADC works. There it's got the part list, the power supply, and we carry on and then we're at the end of it and then we're in the lovely world of computers and everything. What's in next month? We've got the Human League, of course. <laughs> lovely. So first things first, typically it's a flat plate screwdriver. Uh, gonna take the top off and have a look on the inside. I'm pretty sure that there were no factory assemble items of these, so every single one of these were built as a kit. Much like the Pyre Fat Man, so this was likely built by somebody other than a person who's trained or whatever you want to call it. Let's have a look on the inside. Ooh. Oh, it's nice and clean and there are not enough RAM chips, so we haven't got the maximum memory. This isn't a maxed out version. I'm gonna have a look around and see if we can find some of these little static RAM chips. They are, ooh, maybe not, MM2114. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 ho, ho. I may need to track some of those down. I don't think I have any of these sitting about. So this is the switch PCB. It's on a separate PCB that connects over via to this, to the main board, which is, a double-sided board and yeah it's quite amazing the audio goes in here there's also the VCO and such then that goes out I think all of the audio is down at the bottom the mixing op amps and stuff are down here then this must be all of the VCO and modulating items pretty sure because it has got CA 3080s over here which I'm not sure what they're actually used for in this we'll have to have a look and then these are the memory this is the memory they're all different brands, the memory, which is quite interesting. <clears throat> there has been a bit of a bodge on the 7805 over here. If you have a look, it might have been replaced at some point and a, a break in the circuit board. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But as you can see, they've decided to, maybe they've just repaired it from the top and haven't bothered removing it. That's a, that's a possible. I think they forgot to put it in and then bodged it onto it. That's what's happened, so they didn't have to take off the circuit board again. Who cares, it's all good. There's actually four 7805 uh, voltage regulators, and then there's a bipolar power supply up here for all the VCOs and stuff, and then that gets bounced down into these, but there's there's five. Oh no, there's five 7805s. Very interesting. This has got a repeat circuit, which will stop the RAM from recording onto and also deleting the memory, I think, but we'll find out. So after we've had a little look, something's fallen off. Not sure whether that's come from here. It might have, it might very well have just fallen off. Where's that come from? I don't think so. That looks like something I've removed. I think I removed that. So I think the next thing we're going to do is plug it in. Let's give it a go with the Pyre Fat Man. There will be another video in the next few days using this with the next item in the Look Mum No Computer videos. That's before it goes in the museum. But but for this video, let's try it with the Pyre Fat Man because that's what's going to be doing in the museum. Let's plop it back together. So before we get some direct recording of this, let's have a look at the controls. There's a couple of funky things that uh, could be updated a little bit. Could be It could be slightly modified to be a bit better, but uh, I'm not going to bother because it's it's good as it is. So it's got two inputs, high and low, and then it's got um, input level for that. It's got a repeat, which is basically the feedback. It's got a repeater, and you can turn that on with a jack going in. Then you've got time delay. This is the, uh, if you flick on push it in and then it says oscillator. That means you can choose between the time delay. If you flick it off, then it turns on this knob and you can fine tune the times between these. Uh, however, I think it would be better if you turned it off because when you turn it off, it actually turns on this depth and sweep, which is a modulation of the time. But it'd be good if you could use that at the same time. That would be one of the modifications. And then you've got four kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. That's the speed at which um, it would run at. And that gives you two different rows worth of delay times. For instance, if you push it in for the four kilohertz, 
needs a bit of a fiddle, uh, you'll end up with 1.56 milliseconds all the way up to 1.6 milliseconds. So that's the slower um, of the delay times. However, remember, we haven't got all of the RAM chips in there right now, so we won't get the 1.56. It'll just stop halfway through. But that may change when I get uh, having a look around to see if I've got any spare. If we flick over to the 10 kilohertz, then you get all the way from 0 0.62 milliseconds all the way up to 0 0.6. 4 milliseconds for all of the funky other delay times and you get a higher resolution you'll notice there they will notice that it gets softer when you slow it down that's because you're know, half of the resolution near enough and then you got a mix knob and you got a level output and an output that's that's it <laughs> I need to wait for some contact cleaner to turn up because the pots are a little bit mucky, but yes, it's a really good delay actually. When you think about where it's, what time it's come from, 1982, and that's a digital delay, as it was mentioned in the magazine, a similar one that's a manufactured version would cost in 1982 more than a thousand pounds. This one you could make for, I think it was 180. <laughs> One set, one set, and then we let's freeze it. There we go. Because I played to the same speed of it, and then we can turn up the depth. <laughs> so we've now frozen it, and we're so we're now frozen it, and we're modulating the speed of the clock using the depth and the sweep. The sweep is the speed, the depth is how big the modulation is. And obviously you can still flick these. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but if you increase the amount of time delay, you end up opening it up to different RAM chips that haven't yet been recorded on, so you get garbled. And then with 1.6, because we don't actually have enough RAM chips in there to get the 1.6 seconds, you actually get the garble that was one from 1.2 because I did record it on 0 0.8. So this is more RAM chips with random bits. There's some stuff from the last time we used those. And then when we get to 1.6, it stops for a bit because we're going over ra blank RAM chips. Right, let's get some direct recording, shall we?
By the way, there's extended versions of both of these jams available on Patreon. And you can also cut parts up and use them as special effects and stuff. And there's a WAV download over on Patreon as well. By the time the next out of season open days come about, which is the end of November, both of these will be set up in a rack with a couple of other things. We'll be looking at that in another video when it's all put in there. But anyway, till next time, that's the Powertran Digital Delay Dine and the Pyre. Fat Man, have a lovely time. Yeah.